So what are these for? Butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and freestyle. All right, we're going to win more this year? Yes. 500 miles, 500 miles, 500 miles, 500 miles. Lord, I'm 500 miles from my home. Good morning, good morning everyone. It's a beautiful morning in Melbourne. Actually, do you remember, do you guys remember when I used to start every video saying, hello, flying friends? Hello again, flying friends. Hello, flying friends. Hello, flying friends. Hello, flying, flying friends. Friend. I don't do that anymore. Let me know if you want me to bring that back. Happy to do that again. Sadly, we're not actually flying today. I've got a bunch of errands that I need to run around Melbourne. But whilst I'm doing that, I wanted to chat to you about something which is going to be a little bit tricky to talk about, bearing in mind how much I love Qantas. Um, but I think it needs to be said. I actually got quite a lot of travel booked this year already. And that's part of the point of this video is there's quite a few trips coming up uh, in just under two weeks time going to be out in Sri Lanka, uh, spending some time over there in Colombo and also hopefully heading out to the Maldives as well, which I've never been to before. But the main point of telling you all this is because this was all booked through a double status credits promotion that Qantas had. It's so windy this morning. Probably a good thing we're not flying actually. This is then going to be a story about status credits. Now, well, to be technical, this is a story about frequent flyer miles, but how status credits are really important to help you get the most frequent flyer miles that you can for every flight that you're doing. But before I get into too much detail, here's a really quick, here's a really quick 30 second overview with very expensive graphics explaining what exactly are status credits. When you fly from here to here, you earn frequent flyer miles for every mile that you fly. You also earn status credits for the same leg. Now, when you earn status credits, and over 12 months, the more flights you do, and the more status credits you earn, determines which status credit tier you end up at. But the trouble is, if you don't get to a certain level by the time your year ends, your points reset to zero again, and you're back to zero. Uh, a big thank you as well to my daughter who did provide the graphics and the artwork for that sequence. And the plane. And the plane. <laughs> Actually, that's the real reason why we're not flying today, because I blew the budget on that amazing demonstration and all those graphics. So why collect status credits and frequent flyer miles? Well, it's twofold. Status credits are great because you obviously get the benefits that come with the different levels of status. So for example, if you get gold with Qantas, you can get into all of their lounges in the airports around Australia and around the world, and you don't have to pay. So you save that seven, $600, however much it is for the annual fee. If you go up another tier, you go up to platinum, you get access to all the first class lounges around the world as well. But let's not forget the goal here at the end of the day is frequent flyer miles. That's what we want here. That's what you can exchange to actually go places. You can exchange to get upgrades. And as you know, with my obsession with travel and flying, that's kind of my objective here. But the higher your status credit level, the more frequent flyer miles you get for the same flight. Let me give you an example. If you do a normal flight, which is going to earn you a thousand frequent flyer miles at the bronze status, oh. you'll get a thousand miles for that flight. If you go up a tier and you go to the silver status, you get a 50% bump on top. Gold gets 75% on top and platinum actually gets 100%. So you get double the points for the same flight that you're doing if you're a bronze frequent flyer compared to if you're a platinum frequent flyer. Also, side note, it is really hard to say frequent flyer so many times in the video. Apologies if I've said frequent a lot of times. I, I, think I, I think I did. Also realized I really need a haircut. There's a place over there I might go. Anyway, the point of this video is that I want to warn you about something you may not otherwise know with status credits. And that is to do with when you take a flight and when you actually earn those status credits to your account. And the timing of when you take a flight and when those status credits come into your account is critical. sponsored video for Abacus. They're just a very good um, coffee shop in Melbourne and I got my coffee, unnecessary pastry. So status credits. Now the thing that you need to be aware of and the thing that caught us out is when you book a flight 
and you're expecting to get status credits as a result of that flight, especially when you're booking it during some kind of promotion, and in our case it was the double status credits promotion, you need to expect that those status credits are going to appear in your account a fair time after you've actually touched down. Now these caught us both by surprise because I fly a lot between Sydney and Melbourne domestically, right? You get 10 status credits between Sydney and Melbourne, they appear in your account pretty much by the time you leave the airport. Double status credits is different. When you're expecting those status credits to come in so you can go up a tier before a certain point in time, you need to make sure that any bookings you're making are made well before your year's gonna end. So in our example, we booked that flight. Remember when I went to Singapore recently and I was doing that flight in Selitar? We landed on January the 23rd and Jack, my wife, her status credits year expires at the end of January. So there were seven days between landing and when she was hopefully gonna go up a tier, but because those status credits didn't come in time, she didn't actually get that upgrade to the next tier. Now we followed up with Qantas obviously, and we've spoken to them about this, and I will be honest, Qantas have been really good in this whole thing. They, they're looking at it for us and they're investigating what's gonna happen, and we don't know either way whether she's gonna get that upgrade to the next tier, but I thought it's important so you guys know that if you are relying on status credits to get yourself upgraded from one tier to the other, just make sure that you make that booking well before your year ends, because there's likely to be a delay between between your wheels touching down and the status credits actually appearing in your account. Okay, more on that in a second, but first, uh, it is my daughter's swimming carnival. She's in the district swimming carnival for her school. So we need to go cheer her on. I love Melbourne. Do you know what? If there's one thing we're not short of here in Melbourne, it's wide open spaces. Look at this. It's a vlogger's dream. It gets you away from all the public on the street who stare at you when you're pointing a camera at yourself. So what are, what are my tips then, knowing all that, what are my tips on if you are trying to look to build your status credits and you don't want to get pinged with an issue like this? So number one, don't do what we did and book a flight which gets you to your destination a week before your status credit year is up because that's obviously too close as, as we proved in our situation. My second bit of advice is if you are gonna book and if you have booked and if your status credit year is coming to an end and you haven't got your points, go to customer service before your year ends. I think, honestly, the longer you leave it, the less chance you're gonna get of actually getting those status credits approved to your account. And my final tip, if you have earned points and you haven't seen them in your account yet, there's a facility where you can jump online and you can put in a points claim request. So that's where you've just spat on the lens. So you've put in the claim for your points, you've reached out to customer service, you've basically done everything you can to remind the airline that you wanna get those status credits. If anyone out there is watching this who's actually from the airlines and has come across this situation before and has got some additional tips for travelers, leave a comment in the comments below and you can kind of give us your official line on what we should be doing as passengers to make sure this doesn't happen to us. And next up on the channel, well, we've got another couple of flights coming up in the Cirrus. The SR22 is going to get another workout. I'm trying to take it down to an airfield that I was told never to land at. That should be an interesting one if I can get permission to go in there. Also want to take the SR22 over water. I want to try and get it down to King Island. That's about half an hour over water, but I haven't told my missus that, so that's between you and me, okay? Okay. 